Okay, let's talk about our product. What are we selling? When you're a recruiter, if you own a staffing business, it's a person, it's a human being. That's our candidates, that's our inventory on the shelf that we are essentially making money off when our clients give us a job order. So with that comes a pretty tricky situation. You see, we don't deal with widgets. We're not making a piece of machinery or a tool. Um, we can't program this to work right every single time that we send it out to our customers. We're dealing with human beings. They've got emotions, they've got feelings, uh, things that we can't control. However, there is a psychology behind getting these candidates to commit to your job order. And that's the key. Um, you, there's really nothing else we can do to guarantee that a person is going to follow through in your interview process with your client. If your candidate is gonna start you know, that day, that assigned day of when your client wants them to start. Uh, so this is the closest thing that I know and what's worked for me over the past 25 years to make sure that your candidate's gonna stick and they're gonna follow through with the job and be loyal and committed to this. It's called the art of lockdown. And I learned this over 20 years ago and I've used it every day in my line of business. I've teached every new recruiter that I brought into my multiple staffing companies. And if you can perfect this as a recruiter, you're gonna make a lot of money and save a lot of headaches and frustration. Okay, it's not a perfect science, don't get me wrong. Again, it's an intangible product, so you can't control every scenario every time. But this theory, the art of lockdown, will certainly help you minimize your losses with candidates. All right, so let's, let's go through it. When you screen a candidate for a particular job, there's a series of questions that you go through, right? It's the obvious. Where are you working right now? If you're not working, why? Where did you work last? Tell me exactly what you did on a daily basis. Walk me through it. Help me understand, right? You want to get a really good understanding of what their skill set is. And more importantly, all your client really cares about is what their most recent background is. Like, what are, what are you doing now? Or what have you done the past year, two years, six months? You know, if the candidate starts talking about things they did five years ago, or they go back to 1985, that doesn't matter. Like cut them off, okay, in a polite, respectful way, because time is money. And you gotta get through these screenings with your candidates because your client is waiting for the right candidate and you don't wanna lose this rec to your competition, all right? So again, that takes time to develop, but you're in control of this phone call at all times. Don't ever let the candidate get you off your path. If they do, you wanna get back on the path. The goal is to find out what they know most recently, why they don't like what they're doing right now, why they've been unemployed for six months or two months or a month. Find those things out, okay? Find out what they wanna make and pay. Um, and so when you get those general questions in place or those answers in place, you then pause and you go into your lockdown. And what this means is you get very intentional and very serious with this candidate. They need to hear it in your tone, okay? There's no laughing here. This is the time to be serious and stern and be very clear with this candidate what the expectations are going forward. So I'll give you an example. If I'm working on a new rec with a brand new company, this is a really big deal. Now granted, every company that gives you a job rec that's qualified is a big deal, but especially the new companies, here they are giving you your first chance to prove yourself. I call these account breakers. And if you can nail this one, they're gonna believe in you. It's gonna help you cultivate your client relationship. And most likely, they're gonna give you more recs, which is fantastic. So I've had companies that you know called recs out to other recruiters that they felt comfortable with. Those recruiters, for whatever reason, couldn't fill the rec. Maybe they were on vacation, maybe they got complacent, who knows. I was able to strike at the right time, nailed it, and then I got 10 more recs after that and you know, build over $100,000 a year with this particular customer. That's happened multiple times for me and it can happen for you. So the candidate, let's ask these questions. Okay, this is one I love. So tell me, Mr. Candidate or Mrs. Candidate, on a scale from one to 10, 10 being the most serious, how serious are you about leaving your job right now 
and starting this new offer or this new job opportunity that I just reviewed with you? And be quiet. Let them answer. Awkward silence is fine. And if they give you anything less than a 10, you need to dig. You need to find out what's going on. I, nines aren't so bad. You know, nine shows me that they're really serious, but I often get answers like, yeah, maybe a seven. All right, no. So response would be, okay, well, why, why a seven? How come not a 10? Let them answer. They might say things like, well, you know, um, I'm really not unhappy where I am right now, but if something better came along, I might think about doing it. Um, or, um, you know, uh, it's always good to keep your eyes and ears open. My dad once told me that, and so it can't hurt to hear about what's actually out there. All right, those are responses that you don't want to hear. Actually, you do want to hear them because it's gonna save a lot of your time and effort. So when I hear that, I say, you know, hey, look, I, I really respect your answer, but I gotta tell you, I'm looking for tens right now. Um, I can't submit a candidate to my client, my brand new client, unless you're a 10 on that scale. And I hope you understand that, I, all due respect to you. So why don't you kind of work through this and when you're a 10, when you're 100% serious about making a move from your existing job, I want to know about it. And then you and I are going to work together and I'll find you something. Okay. Typically you will get the answer. Yeah, you know, you're right. I appreciate that. I'm really happy that we got in touch today. This is good for proactive reasons. And that's great. You know, Hey, look, we're going to put you in our database. I'm going to stay in touch with you. If anything should change on your side, please let me know. And you'll hear from me, you know, every two weeks or so. Uh, and we'll go from there. Have a great day. Done. Okay. So that's, that's a good example of a lockdown. Another lockdown question might be, um, all right, so uh, my client is looking for you to start work in two weeks on you know, May 12th. How does that date look for you? It looks great. I can do it. Fantastic. All right, so tell me something. What's going on in your life right now? Well, what do you mean by that? What I mean is, are you in school? Are you taking classes at night? Okay. Do you have any vacation lined up? Right? You got to get them thinking. They're not going to tell you these things, okay, because they're excited that you're calling them. You're a recruiter with an opportunity for them, and their emotions get in the way of logic. And it's your responsibility to be a psychologist right now and dig this out of their head, all right? And I will tell you, over 75% of the time, I uncover something with those two questions. They'll say, you know, yeah, actually, I'm taking night classes right now. Or I'm thinking about doing that. I'm thinking about going back to school. Okay, hey, that's great. I have no problem with that. But how is that going to affect this full-time role that we have for you? When would those classes start? Would it require you to leave work early? Um, you know, how committed are you going to be to this full-time job that we have for you? Or, yeah, I, you know, we do have vacation lined up. We're going to Hawaii. We've had a plan for the past five years. We're, my wife and I are so excited about it. And uh, we're leaving next month. Okay, fair enough. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share that with my client. And that's the best thing you can do, recruiters. Get out in front of those situations. Be proactive. If this candidate is worth the squeeze, if they're a good enough candidate in your mind, and you've gone through your, your checklist and your lockdown, and you're going to submit them over, you want to pick up the phone call your client, sell your candidate over the phone before you submit that resume and explain the different objections or whatever it may be, the challenges to your client. Mr. Client, I want to let you know that Johnny has had a vacation lined up in Hawaii for the past five years. Um, I was really appreciative that he let me know that up front. Is that going to pose a problem um, for you if you hire him in two weeks and they leave for a week, a month from now or two months from now? Okay. Typically, 90% of the time, if not higher percentage, the client's going to say, eh, I can work with that. It's not a problem. Thank you for letting me know. And you see what that does? It, you've, you're creating a trust factor with all parties, candidate, client, you as a recruiter. You're doing the job that your client is, can't do right now. They're too busy. They're too busy running their P&L and projects. They're, they're not recruiters. That's why they're using you to, to, to find this stuff out. Okay. 
Those are really good examples of what I call lockdown. You're locking those areas up and you're leaving no chance for guessing, for surprises, no, leave no stone unturned, all right? So dig in. Why are you leaving your job? Help me understand this. Um, you know, my boss, I, I don't like my boss. We bump heads. Whew, I get that sometimes. And that's, you know, to me, it could be a red flag. Dig in that area. Well, you know, what happened? What happened with you and your boss? Explain to me. Tell me the story. I need to know. Uh, well, you know, um, I, uh, I haven't seen my kids in a long time and I've been working long hours and, um, I just wanted, I wanted some time off and I didn't, I wasn't able to get it. So it really upset me. Okay. So that tells me that this candidate might be burnt out and they may be lacking family time. So if they're going to go into a new role with me where I'm going to need their commitment and full-time responsibilities, uh, that's an area that I want to question right now. And it's okay. Hey, Mr. Candidate, you know, look, if you need some time to clear your head, um, family time is, is number one in my book. Take it. Take some time off. Recharge your batteries and let me know when you're ready. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. You know, you're a great candidate. Uh, I want to work with you. A lot of my customers could certainly use your skill set. Um, but when you're ready, when you feel 100% committed, when you're a 10 out of 10 on that scale that I asked you about, when you're serious about making this move, that's when I want to talk to you because that's when I know that I can help you. Um, so those are some really good examples of lockdown questions. And um, this will substantially help you retain that candidate through the interview process, even onto onboarding when they start. Another question I ask is, a great question to ask that you must ask is, Mr. Candidate, tell me what's going on in your world right now. What is going on in your life? Do you have any job offers pending? Have you interviewed recently? And if you have, how far are you in that interview process? Always ask that question. They're not going to tell you. They're not going to share that information with you. And why do you want to ask that? You want to know what the temperature of this candidate is. Are they just getting their feelers out there? Are they using you to find a better offer? Okay, this is what happens. Uh, unfortunately, in recruiting, when you're when you're wearing your recruiter hat, uh, you can't. I hate to say this, but you can't really trust anybody. Okay, it's tough. You got to have thick skin. But again, you're the psychologist here, and you have to uncover these um, these objections. All right. So, oh yeah, hey Russ, I'm, you know, I interviewed with uh, a company three weeks ago. It looks really good. Oh great. Well, how far are you in that process? Well. You know, I'm going on to my third and final interview and, oh, that's really exciting. So do you, do you think you're going to get the job? And they might tell you, uh, I've got a really good feeling they will. Okay. Appreciate you sharing that with me. Hey, look, I want you to see that through and see how that works out for you before I continue forward with our process. And the reason why, Mr. Candidate, once I submit your resume, once I email your resume over to my client, they have an expectation of us that you're ready to start working if they like you and if, the, if you pass the interview test. So I can't afford for you to not move forward in this process. I have to protect my client's time, your time, and my time. And respectfully, I hope you understand that. So when you're ready to move forward 100% with our opportunity, with nothing else in the background, I'd love to work with you. All right? So... If they tell you they've got a job offer pending, ask them, you know, what's holding you back from taking it? Where does our opportunity rank with the one that you have in front of you? Is it money? How much, how much more are they offering you than what I'm offering you with our job? Um, these, are, these are answers that you need from your candidate. All right, so art of lockdown, I hope that helps you. I know it helped me over the past 20 plus years in recruiting and it's helped a lot of the recruiters that I've trained.